Um, this film is a part of the platform section of the festival, and the platform prize is supported by Air France, so a big thank you to them. It's also eligible for the Girls People's Choice Award, and you know how important that award is. Uh, please do vote at tiff.net um, slash vote. I'd like to thank the people that brought us tonight's film, Cineopolis Distribution and the Mexican Film Institute. Woo, exactly. Why not? We love the Mexicans. Now, three years ago, we premiered uh, Alejandra's first film, Semana Santa. We had that as a world premiere here in Toronto. And this is her second feature film. What a film it actually is. Um, it's set in the early 80s. Very subtle and incredibly riveting piece of social commentary and maybe even social satire at the same time, which um, takes place amidst the Mexican upper classes seen through the eyes of the wives of these men who uh, are obviously very, very wealthy. And it's an incredibly beautiful study in observation, decor, style, as you will see, fashion and observation. Um, we were really highly impressed when we saw this film. Alejandra came to the Talent Lab a couple of years ago as well. And it's wonderful to see a filmmaker with, here with her first film, moving through Talent Lab, now onto her second film in the platform section. So please join me in welcoming Alejandra Marquez Abella. Hi, hello, everyone. I'm so very excited to be here tonight. Um, I just wanted to say that I, I tried to make a film about our society or system, but as film, gives you the opportunity to get into people's heads. I think I came out with more questions than answers. So I really, really hope you enjoy it and you get some thoughts <laughs> afterwards. I want to uh, introduce my amazing actresses, Ilse Salas, <laughs> Joanna Murillo, Cassandra Changuerotti, the author of Las Niñas Bien, the book that inspired our film, Guadalupe Loaesa. My producers, Gabby and Rodrigo. And finally, the kids who played the song. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Let's welcome back Alejandra Marquez Abella, Ilse Salas, Rodrigo S. Gonzalez for the Q&A. Come on out. Let us, let us say. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's such a huge pleasure to have have Alejandra back. You know, she was here a couple of years ago with her first feature, and it's so amazing from discovery to platform. Congratulations, and congratulations to all of you. It's been so such an honor to be able to share this film with the Toronto audiences. So we're gonna have uh, some time for a chat now, um, and. There's so many questions, because I was just watching it again. It's such a precise film. It's so, <laughs> visually, it's just so stunning. Um, but I just, I, I mean, it's, I find it fascinating, because I know that, uh, I think Rodrigo brought this project to you. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that, how, how this came to be, because um, I know it's based on, on, a, on a novel. And I'd just like for, yeah, for you both to talk about that. Yeah, well, it was actually an accident, uh, as almost all the movies. Um, I am. Uh, I have a good friend, and he told me that if I can take seriously her, ma his mom, because he's a writer, but I didn't know who was uh, her, his mom. 
So uh, I went because he's my friend, just because of that. And I discovered that uh, he was a very famous writer in Mexico. And, and I was um, surprised. And she was talking to me about all the books that she had, 42 yeah. up to date. And, and she is a very successful writer in Mexico. So I discovered that she had a lot of like uh, short stories in the in their books, but mm -hmm. not as a movie. And I went with my with my partner Rafael Ley from Wu Films and with Gabriela, and we thought that we have a very good uh, opportunity to mm -hmm. really take these characters and all the environment that Guadalupe Loesa create, and and to create a, a story about this woman. And but is a, a woman the writer, and is four women in the story. Mm -hmm. So we needed a director woman right. and also a photographer woman, and all mm -hmm. the point of view of mm -hmm. a woman to create this this movie. And and then Alejandra, um, because she looks very sweet, but she's so tough. <laughs> <laughs> and but that's we, why I wear pink. Yes. <laughs> And finally, we did an arrangement, and and she <laughs> reviewed all the books, and we, uh, we did uh, a lot of research about all the the characters, mm -hmm. and and she started to write the script, and then she started to we create the the idea to do all the process for the movie. Yeah. Right. No, I really want to read the book now, but uh, <laughs> but it's very different, right? I mean, like it's a chronicle. Uh, it's more of a chronicle, and and how did you? Because you you have a like you really have a psychological approach like you're trying to get into, you know the uh, the psychological uh, you know r uh, world of this character. Uh, we were talking before too. You really wanted to to shoot um, female anxiety. Um, so how yeah? Can you tell us a bit about how you the the process of writing the script. Okay, the 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 book Las Niñas Bien is a compilation of Guadalupe's articles mm -hmm. along three years, more, more so. And she wrote about these women during the crisis. So she was very precise with details, which I found very interesting, of course. And I think that uh, we've seen these kind of stories in Mexico and Latin America uh, approached maybe as comedies or with a much lighter satire kind of vibe. And I wanted to not redeem this character that's, uh, that's been laughed at many, many times. So uh, it, it, yeah, it was a, like a difficult process because I mean, it's your protagonist and you wanna care for her and you wanna go and, and walk by her side. Verdad? <laughs> but you, but you, still you have to. I mean, you you want to judge her and you want to be observing her and being critical of her. So, I think this was like the most complicated thing since the script for me. Then, uh, working with Ilse, I think that was another a uh, thing that re repeated and that we talked mm -hmm. like a lot. Um, and yes, I think that. Uh, the, the only way of doing this was trying to get in her head, mm -hmm. like literally, and trying to understand what was happening there. And uh, at times stepping out of the head and just observing her. And that, that switch was mm -hmm. like something I was very clear since since the beginning that, that I wanted to have on the film. Right. Thank you. No, and uh, and how did you how did you prepare with Ilsa? Because she, you're so amazing. Like you're so good. So much is communicated by just these you know, facial gesture, you know, glances. Um, she's really amazing. Yeah. What? Well, thank you. Uh, well, the first time Alejandra and Rodrigo and Gabriela told me about this film, I, I was like, okay, but uh, I hope this will not be a comedy because mm -hmm. uh, this is not funny for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, the classism in Mexico and those characters are quite um, disturbing and I don't know. Yeah. And... And the three of them were like, of course, that's why we choose you. <laughs> uh, I'm funny, but not in movies. Este, um, <laughs> uh, 
And and for me, it was very important to love the character, mm -hmm. which was quite difficult, to be honest, because we were talking about things uh, that that hurts as a Mexican, a woman. I mean, this empty life, those details which are really interesting and beautiful are like, are, they talk about empty lives and, and that's, I don't know, weird. And we worked a, a lot. I I became pregnant in that process. So everyone was pregnant. Yeah. yeah. Everyone is pregnant are. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I I learned a lot about yeah. breastfeeding. <laughs> about breastfeeding. <laughs> when 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 they get the the money to do the the film, mm -hmm. I was like, eh, but guess what? <laughs> uh, we have to wait nine months <laughs> to do this. And no, 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 maybe yes, six yes, months. Yes, yes, actually, yes. So, and they say, okay, we will wait for you, no? And all that time, I I worked with Alejandra a lot. We were talking a lot, look, uh, we, we looked movies. Um, we read, of course, the, the books of Guadalupe Loaesa, and we discovered something very beautiful on those characters. Um, I hope you too, probably not, I don't know, that's your trip. Yeah. Uh, and it was a, a very um, beautiful journey uh, because I hate this character uh, the first in my first yeah. read. I hate it. And I was like, if I hate it, imagine the other people, no? And then I went in love with her. And I hope someone too. Yeah. <laughs> someone will too. <laughs> Thank you. We have a, let's see. Yeah. So good. Sorry about my English. Eh? It's I think too fast and I speak too fast. It's very good. It's very good. <laughs> um, we have some time to take some questions from the audience as well uh, for our team here. Yeah, I have a question over there. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Right. So the the the, the question is for um, about the the clapping the sound. Like yeah, how you used um, yeah music sound because there's a real interesting soundscape as well. I love the clapping. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I'm sort of uncomfortable using music um, to like sweeten film, and I wanted the music on this film to sort of interrupt the film to make this kind of um, change in the perspective uh, by taking us out of the character at times or of or giving us information that that we w w would be uh, building so yeah and i thought of it as a choir as a chorus that was sort of making a judgment about certain things in certain moments. To me, it was an element of, uh, like another cinematic element, and it shouldn't be there uh, by just because, just because. And Tomas Barreiro, who's over there, is a musician, so please stand up so that people... <laughs> please stand up! <laughs> He did, he did everything. <laughs> yeah, a question here at the front. Go ahead. Yeah. It's about the last scene. Mm -hmm. um, talking about you know, liking the character, it seems like, uh, well, Mark, can you tell us about why does the husband keep his hands in relationship with the third mm -hmm. wife in the relationship? Right. <laughs> So the questions about the last scene, which I I think is amazing, and the way the the husband looks at her when she starts barking along. I wouldn't want to answer that. I mean, I I would love for you to just imagine whatever you you want and and uh, arrive to your own conclusions, but I think that there's uh, like um, their relationship changes a lot. And to me, it was very important to ha to make a comment about 
women and men and relationships and marriages back then, now, I don't know. Just a clue. <laughs> I thought it was because she was going to where the money was. Like now she's switching. <laughs> <laughs> That's what was my reading. But yeah, question here. Created it so accurately and beautifully. Well, yeah. that the work. Uh, pardon, oh, do, no, it. just in case. Yeah, the the uh, questions about the detail and the art direction, the wardrobe. Like it's, it's a very detailed film, and how you, if you can talk about that. Anaí Ramos and Claudio Castelli did uh, the wardrobe and the the art, and they were amazing at it. I, I have to say that because it's their job. O sea, they did it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think that the Guadalupe's books were really helpful because they 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 talked about how the earrings were or the forks and the you know it has okay. it they had like really precise details uh, about things and and of course about clothing and everything so and also we have original uh, ah. <laughs> clothes from Guadalupe that she Guadalupe let us lent from us her, her closet. wardrobe. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> all, all the Chanel bags are from Guadalupe. Are, for, are hers? <laughs> the sh oh, yeah. See, lots of shoulder yeah. pads, I think. So, so how, did the sh how did the shoulder pads get into the script? I mean, how? how was it's it? like an... Um, <laughs> they are back, by the way. Are they back? <laughs> um, it, they are, I mean, they... It's an, uh, like a um, thing from the 80s, of yeah. course, mm -hmm. but to me it was a way of, for, of that women have to like do what she was uh, saying her mother made her do, you know, like stand up and grow right. and be like a, right. like a woman. Yeah, because she takes them off at the end, right? <laughs> she pulls them out. Another clue. Another <laughs> clue, yeah. <laughs> No, por favor. What could be the importance for the Thai society in Mexico to see that uh, movie and to learn about that yeah. kind of character? Right. So, um, wh what could be the importance uh, for um, the Mexican upper classes to see this movie? What could, what could they learn from it? Mm. Uh, to me, <laughs> I think we should stop laughing. Uh, at them and take them more seriously because they are really powerful and and I think by laughing at them we redeem them and we pardon them and I think things as Ilse said like social inequality and classism should be taken seriously and I have this secret wish that people will stop aspiring to be Sofia, you know? Because I think that in Latin America, uh, at least in Mexico that I can speak of, um, you are either the oppressor or the oppressed. And you forget you were the oppressed when you're the oppressor. So I, that to me is really important. <laughs> Did I see a question back there? No, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, a question here at the front. Go ahead. Yeah, following that, that same thought in the book, why so much of the main images and other kinds of images are set in the 80s? Right. So, so why was it set in the 80s? Be, I mean, just be, because of that, because it's so similar to to these times. It's just like nothing has happened and time has frozen since the 80s. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot has changed, but nothing has changed. So that was... And, and at that time, there was a big crisis in Mexico. Well, since then, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> every year, no? But uh, that time, uh, it was really, really something. In Mexico, I mean, the dollar was like 200% up for one day to another. 
uh, it was really, really bad. And people started, uh, rich people um, started to su commit suicides. And that was very uh, common. So that's a very specific. And, and, and this president, mm -hmm. uh, that was real. People barked to him in restaurants. And he, he said, I will defend the peso like, like a dog. And well, obviously not. Well, yeah, like a chihuahua. <laughs> uh, but but and because we love those vintage jokes as well. <laughs> that was like a really popular joke. So. Yeah, it's our our nostalgia. Uh, but also, it can be this time. I mean, with the influencers, and I mean, those can be the Kardashian or something. I mean, sorry if someone get offended. Uh, but. Probably, probably not. <laughs> um, the cinematography is amazing. A lot of people have like uh, spoken about it. Can you tell us how you found your cinematographer? How you worked with her? Well, Dar Dariela is an old friend, okay. and we we've never worked together s till this film. Um, I was really worried to work with a friend, <laughs> but it went out really well. I think Dariel and I share that we like, we love language, to work with language in cinema. And so we we sat and we, we thought of this film uh, way before shooting it. So we knew like the codes of things we wanted to say. So when we were on set and things happened, we, we just looked at each other. And, and knew what what's gonna what was gonna work on the case, and it was amazing. I really uh, appreciated having Gabby as a producer. Mm -hmm. All the actresses, Dariela, it was a very uh, estrogeno set. Yeah. <laughs> so and that was a, a new thing I think for everyone, not just for Rodrigo. <laughs> I think it was something different and new at least to me yeah. so yeah because so, you were telling me about that when i saw you in mexico that it was just such a like such a great atmosphere on the set uh, gabriella can you can you talk to us about about that well it wasn't challenge it yeah. was actually uh amazing because we were a very uh, nice team and we all the time worked together and i think that every woman uh, in our crew went to uh, give the best, you know, and work with another woman, make us stronger. And even though we have Rodrigo, who all the time take care of us, mm -hmm. uh, we felt really strong working with, to, with women, actually. I think that Rodrigo and Claudio, the art directors, were the only men around. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think one of the best things that this movie has is the crew mm -hmm. that we have and all the actresses that we get, because that makes everything different and also special as you see in the movie. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, okay, we have time for one last question. We're gonna, oh, can I do one? Okay, go ahead, sir. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right. What was the greater fear? Fear of losing ostracization or bankruptcy? Um, one of the questions I think that I, I, I have after doing this film is that is about uh, I mean, it's are, are powerful women powerful? Mm -hmm. And so what is that that they lose when they lose the money? Or so what is lost when they lost the money or the power? So I, I, I don't really know if, if one fear was bigger than the other. It's just something untangible and that, I don't know, that I think englo englobes both, you know? It's a, it's a fear of losing something that you don't even know what it is. And as, as Ilse was saying, that's, it's a sort of emptiness that it's frightening. I hope I mm -hmm. made some sense. <laughs> Thank you.
No, no, thank you. I just um, just really want to thank you all, Rodrigo, Gabriela, Ilse, Alejandra, for being here with us, for sharing uh, the Las Niñas Bien. And uh, I can't wait for the next films. Yes, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you, Diana, thank you. so much. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs>